My name is Katie Berry. I'm a senior manager with RSM, and with me is Katie Rodriguez. She's a supervisor um, on the engagement this year. So, um, kicking off with um, the agenda, we'll cover all these pretty quickly. Um, the audit team. So, in addition to us, we have a team um, back in the office. John George's partner. He's present presented in prior years, and then Audrey Lee is on site every day, and then our independent report reviewer. <coughs> As far as the audit process, it's, it's a pretty lengthy process. Um, from beginning to end, it's about five months. Um, there's a lot of status calls throughout the time. A lot of effort goes into preparing for the audit, doing the work, and the follow-up, and the questions. So we really appreciate Ken and Connie and everybody in the business office um, helping us through each one of these steps. Um, so planning, we had the original meeting with them, kind of going through um, our timeline, and to that extent, preliminary field work, we're doing our risk assessments. Um, we're doing our understanding, seeing if there's any changes in controls, we're testing those controls, um, and we start our federal program compliance testing. Final field work is where we really get into the nuts and bolts, so um, a lot of requests um, that we're asking, a lot of invoices, bank statements, um, a lot of individual transactions that we're looking at through this process. Um, and then the approval and the issuance, so the, the reports that are in front of you, um, take a lot of time to prepare, to review, um, so there's a, a lot of um, work that goes into that as well, and the goal is to issue in October in, in time to meet the, the deadlines that you have with all the oversight agencies. So as far as the results, um, so all of our audit opinions were unmodified, which is the good clean opinion, so that, that's what we want. Um, it's nice, fiscal year 19 was a pretty quiet year in the world of GASB, so we didn't have to implement any large um, adopt any new standards by GASB, so um, it, it helps um, to kind of go through the process without those large things that we need to implement. As far as specific financial statement highlights, so put a couple slides in here. Not things were pretty consistent. Here's a slide of the operating funds, the education, and the O and M. So pretty consistent change in fund balance this year was 2.1 million compared to 1.8. Million, so not not a lot of significant changes in revenues, expenditures, and income from last year. And here's some ratios um, that we typically provide: um, the months of expenditures and transfers and fund balance. That's just taking the expenditures um, and transfers divided by the 12 months out of the year, and then comparing it to the fund balance. So, as you can see, with all three of these bullets, pretty consistent with the prior year. <coughs> And then the auxiliary fund was the next one that we highlight. So that's bookstore and, and essentially anything that has a fee attached to it. Um, so from from that standpoint, change in fund balance is about three hundred thousand compared to last year, where it was a little more break even. And the last highlight is over the net position, um, the net investment in capital assets. So what this number represents is all of the capital assets that the college has, and it's reduced by any outstanding bonds that the that the college has, and so it's really a non-spendable number. So of the total net position that the college has, the $169 million, there's 138 that's tied into the capital assets. Um, the, the biggest portion, um, or the next biggest portion, is that unrestricted portion, and, and those are funds available to, to use um, in, in whatever, when, whatever purpose the college would need. And then the 3.3 million, those are restricted for um, either debt service, capital projects, or other um, purposes that the college has identified. So I mentioned this year, we didn't have any significant GASB standards that the college had to implement, which is nice. But um, currently, there's pronouncements out there through Statement 91. Of the ones that are out there, I think the one that would have the most significant impact to the college would be leases, um, and, and that's one that's not effective in for, until June 30th, 2021. I'll, I will say in, in the FASB world, they've extended um, when they've had to implement this standard because it's, it's going to be a big undertaking for those that do have leases, identifying what is there. So this is one that um, we're not sure if Gabby is going to follow suit and extend the adoption of this one, um, but this is one that we'll be talking about um, in next year's audit for sure. Um, the last thing to, to cover, um, 
before I turn it over to Katie, is the required communication letter. So that's a shorter report that should be in your board packet, and this outlines the required communications that we have to tell you um, as your oversight of, of the college. So we didn't identify any significant issues during the audit. Um, we didn't have any audit adjustments during the year. Um, we're required to communicate any material weaknesses, any significant deficiencies, which we did not have any. And it's worth noting as well, we did not have any compliance findings when we did our single audit testing. I, I do want to say when we test our uh, federal grants, um, there's a compliance supplement that we have to follow that is issued by um, the Office of Management and Budget. So they released a 2019 compliance supplement in August of 19, and it was kind of a big deal. Um, prior to this supplement, there was 12 main requirements that we followed um, when we audited federal dollars. So allowable cost, cash management, eligibility, um, there's a whole slew of them. What the 2019 compliance supplement did is it, it directed the oversight dep or the depart departments to narrow those 12 requirements down to six. So each one of the departments had to kind of figure out which were the more significant requirements that they wanted um, us to test. And it, it was a big undertaking. Some of the programs that were required or requirements were shifted into the special reporting. And so there wasn't as much of a cut down as what was expected. Um, but with that, um, we were pretty excited when we did get it. Although last week they issued a revised 2019 compliance supplement. Um, because there was a number of errors um, and corrections that they needed to do to what they released in August. So at this point, um, we still need to go through and compare to the revised supplement that was issued next week. And if, if there is any additional testing um, or any things, any additional requirements that we have to test where there is finding, we will reach out and communicate if anything comes from that. Does anybody have any questions on that? Just real briefly, is, yeah. when you talk about leases, is it leases of ours that that we lease from someone else? Yeah, so okay. it could be it could be any same thing. So currently, any capital leases that the college would have, um, which I don't I don't think there's any um, capital leases. Um, it, it follows suit with that. So if okay. there's operating leases for other grants or contracts, um, or I'm sorry, not grants, contracts where it has any lease requirements in it, it could be more implicit, it, it, they could have a big impact. Okay. Um, so I, I, I kind of think of them as operating leases, where even when you look at the financial statements now, there, there's really none that's disclosed. Um, but it's looking at other potential contracts that are out there that could fit the criteria. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I will turn it over to Katie to cover um, the last two slides. There. Um, I'm just going to give a quick update for our single audit report, and that's over all the federal programs. Uh, there, we had unmodified opinions under GAS and uniform grant guidance. Uh, we did test two federal pro grant programs, uh, the Student Financial Aid Cluster and the National Science Foundation. We had no instances of material material non-compliance noted, and no findings under government auditing standards. Yeah, so just to mention that third bullet, bullet it should be material non-compliance, not uh, compliance, so apologies there. <laughs> and then finally, a uh, quick note for the foundation audit, it, we had an unmodified clean opinion for the foundation. Uh, the foundation report is included in the college financial report as a separately presented component unit. Uh, we had no control deficiencies and no significant audit issue. Great, so that wraps up our presentation. Thank you very much for that opportunity. Okay, thank you ladies. Great job. But for that little steep up at the end, uh, uh, we will be a complete as of today. Anyway, so for my portion of the presentation, I'll be brief. Uh, you know, we're, we do this report because it's required for sort of board policy. We come to the board at least monthly with financial information, and we also uh, provide these, these quarterly updates, and this is the year-end quarterly update. Uh, the auditors have completed their section. Now we'll just do a brief overview of the financial results and then a brief highlight of investment results. 
So in terms of uh, financial results, as the auditors noted, uh, the operating funds saw a very uh, positive uh, gain at the, at, the, at the end of the fiscal year, we estimated $9.7 million. That's available for one-time funds. Uh, the overall uh, position changed by about $2.1 million. And we note that that's a significant improvement over the prior year's results because of the accounting changes that we absorbed last year. Uh, board policy also expects us to have a fund balance of 30% that we've recently amended. It used to be 25%. Uh, last year we were at 38 percent so then we came to the board and requested permission to transfer some of those available funds into the restricted accounts for specific project purposes and tonight we'll be doing the same thing uh, we're at 39 percent and we'll be requesting the board tonight to transfer 2.2 million uh, leaving about 1.4 million available for a later date uh, so we'll be accomplishing that later on in the agenda uh, then just at a very high level you can see revenues came in better than uh, expected spending was much lower than we had planned. Uh, and just in terms of the revenues themselves, you can see tuition you know, down a little bit prior to uh, what we expected, but we did receive more state funding than planned. And also, pointing out miscellaneous revenues was up by $1.8 million. County notes to me that that's where our interest revenues are at, and we did such a better job in our investment returns this year that were showing up in the miscellaneous line. On the spending side, a very clean bill of health as well, a uh, well, uh, low budget on most of the categories, and also compared very favorable to prior years. Uh, Connie did ask me to point out that we did make the change on the other benefits line. If you look at actual to actual, we shifted some of those benefits up into salary this year, so you'll see a slight variance there, but for, for all practical purposes, we're, we're spot on target. And then this is one final slide just showing all the funds of the college at the end of the fiscal year. You can see the top two funds are the ones we typically talk about the education fund and the operations and maintenance general operating funds kind of together, but the other um, funds are also detailed on the report as listed there. And then in terms of the quarterly investment report, uh, you know, uh, the detailed report is in the board portal, but just in terms of the overall fourth quarter uh, outlook, you know, we, the, the, the PFM, our financial advisor, was noting in terms of a market update that there was a plunging in interest rates in the fourth quarter. Uh, they were highlighting also in the, the review that you know we maintain a diversified investment portfolio that's in compliance with state statute and board policy. And then finally, in terms of the future outlook, we're just noting briefly that the rate cuts in the second half of the year, and they are not they're not uh, concerned that a, that a recession is in, 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 imminent. So that's just a quick nutshell of their outlook. And then the remaining slides just kind of give you a breakout of the portfolio, long term, short term, and then our CDB trust accounts, and you can see the. It's got a good diversification of credit quality and sector allocations and uh, you know in the, in the portfolio. And then finally, they have a compliance checklist that shows that our board investments are in line with statutes as well as board policy. And so, sorry to breeze through that, but I know it's been a long meeting. I hope that helps. Any questions? Just one quick one, uh, Ken. Uh, number two under the financial results, you're basically laying out $11 million in uh, a surplus, so to speak, the 9.7 million available in fund balance for one-time investments and the 2.1 uh, million um, total net position increase. That's n that's a different million. Sorry, that's a, that's an additional 11 million than what we were talking about. But those are actually two looks at the same kind of number. The 2.1 million dollar is when they look at the financial statements as a whole on a full accrual basis. Okay. The other number is on the modified accrual base of accounting if I'm saying the right kind, right. right? So it's really uh, just. It's just the 9.7, and that's okay. consistent with what our number has been in uh, prior years. But that's a different number than the right. $11 million that we would go forward with for the right. uh, building process. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That number uh, would be in the, ba uh, the, ba the balance sheets under uh, an account that's... Uh, We've already carved yeah. it out for that expenditure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other than my sincere appreciation um, to the finance team for all their work and a great audit as well as the foundation.